Hello everyone, Pahamar here with episode 8 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode we are going to look at our very first basic items. Um, seems to be the theme, beginning of episodes. I do a little bit of house cleaning from the comments and Twitter and emails that I get uh, since the last episode's gone live. Um, several people have pointed out that I needed to update the version not only in um, the build Gradle for the mod here, where we changed it to 1.7.10-1.0. I also needed to make sure that I updated it in the reference class, as well as in the MC mod info. So, um, some people have also pointed out that yes, you can use Gradle to uh, to handle this for you, and it's always been my intention to show you guys how to have Gradle do it for you. I wanted to do that as part of the advanced build script video that's coming later in the series. Uh, if you'd like to see how to do that, you can look at the Equivalent Exchange 3 build Gradle, uh, which actually will show you how to do it as well. So, um, we will be doing that in a later episode. Uh, for now, we're just going to keep it hard coded. So, I think that's it for house cleaning, so why don't we get started on the actual meat and potatoes here. Today, I just want to show you very basic items, just to get them in-game. Um, there's a lot you can do with items. Uh, in the next video, we're going to do blocks. There's a lot you can do with blocks. Um, today, we're just, and, and the next episode, we're just going to focus on the basics, getting them in there so you can see them. Then we're going to worry about the polish. It's always good to get the base working and then start adding polish to it, because otherwise you can get yourself really deep and lose track of where you are. So, basic items kind of boil down to uh, a common set of things. Um, you need to, obviously, you'll have a class to define what your item is, um, and you will just need to basically set a texture and uh, set a name and register it in the uh, game registry. So I'll show you how to do all that, as well as I'll show you another thing I find very handy. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, because we have something new that doesn't fit into one of our buckets, is I'm going to add a new package called item. And inside of that, I'm going to add a class called item, let's mod reboot. Just short form, because otherwise it's really long. Um, I'm going to have it extend the Minecraft item class. What we're doing here is we're providing a wrapper class around the Minecraft item class that allows us to have uh, kind of a common base to make all of our other items off of. So let me show you this. This is the Equivalent Exchange 3 wrapper item class, so item E. Inside of it, I set a bunch of common things to it, so that in my other uh, classes, so for example, if I were to look at the chalk uh, item, I don't have to write all of this common stuff here. It's very simple. Afterwards, I just need to extend it and just change what I need to. So here I allow uh, a larger max stack size and I change the name. Um, if I were to look at the alchemical tome, I only change the name because it's going to have the same max stack max stack size. The idea of having a wrapper class allows you to keep these common uh, functions in inside the wrapper and then in your specialized item classes for whatever you're going to do. Say it's a cup of tea or something. Um, you only have to code what you really need for that item and it helps really abstract out a lot of uh, the code you would do in your item. So I highly recommend doing something like this. So let's see if I can bring that back up just to show you again. So yeah, and it, it, it's not even a complicated thing. You have your constructor. The important thing is just to call super. So that says, okay, if I have a new item E, call the item one. And then after that, it's just whatever else you want. And then these other overrides and everything or extra me methods and everything. It's just what you want. Um, so let's just do that here. So we'll have public item, let's mod reboot, super. The other nice thing about having a, a common item class that your other items will extend is that you can actually do an instance check on any item in the game 
and you can actually check if it's an instance of item let's mod reboot in this case and then you'll know you're dealing with an item that you've coded so there we go we have our basic wrapper for right now uh, let's change this packages view okay so there's our wrapper one now let's add um, let's see what would be a good item to add because let's mod reboot is a mod uh, that's really just about showing you guys how the code works I don't really have a theme for it so let us see I might need a moment to come up with an idea I'll be back okay guys I got an idea item maple leaf because I'm Canadian why not so this will be my maple leaf item so I'm going to have it extend item let's mod reboot I'm going to add a constructor item maple leaf I'm going to have a call the super and there we go I have a valid item uh, there's no texture there's no name set or anything so you won't actually um, it, it'll have the texture not found uh, in game and I'll show you that in a second um, but this is really all you need uh, to actually get a proper class running. Uh, one thing you may notice if you're from Minecraft 1.6 and you're now looking at Minecraft 1.7, we don't have IDs. Normally you would have to at least specify an ID uh, for the item. It's not, that that's not how it works anymore. Um, now it's actually done all by name instead of a registry and the IDs are come on, dynamic. Wow, sometimes I can talk, I promise you guys. So this is all we need. Um, now why don't we try and actually uh, get it registered in game. Um, and then I can show you guys a little bit more about tweaking and we can actually see the results in game. So I'm going to add another package in here. Oh, not a file. I want a package. I'm going to call it a knit. And inside of a knit, I'm going to add a mod items class. And this class is going to hold and let's scan it because I always like to show you guys how I do it in Equivalent Exchange 3 so you can kind of see a finished implementation somewhat. Mod items. We have a reference to all the items and then we have a bit of code here that registers them. So very similar and you'll notice that I have them as the generic item so that I can have the same declaration. So public static final item Let's mod reboot maple leaf equals new item maple leaf. And we've got an instance of our item. Now I'll add this public static void init method. And what I'm going to do here, this is so this is defining your generic, defining your item based off your generic, and this is initializing it. So to initialize it, you need your instance of it, and you will go to your game registry, which is in cpw.mods.fml common registry. And there's a method in here for registering items. And all you need is an item and the name. So here, I will provide it with the reference here. And I'll give it a name for now. So here, I'll call it uh, Maple Leaf. We will now come back to our main mod class and inside of pre-init, which is where uh, I said in an earlier video in terms of the event lifecycle of the mod, this is where you want to register your, your items and blocks. We will go mod items init. And when we do that and run Minecraft, in a moment we will be able to see our item in game. Okay, Minecraft's loaded up. So now I'm uh, just going to make, my make myself a flat world, because I don't believe that last world there was flat. Drop structures for now. I'll create the world. And there we go. So if I were to search maple, You know what? Because I don't put, it, I didn't put it in a tab, it's not going to show up. So, in Minecraft, there's these ideas of uh, creative tabs. Um, so, if you don't register your item to a creative tab, it won't show up. So, I should be able to use the give command. Yep, that's the player name. 
and then there should be a there we go okay so I just use the give command to give myself this and you'll notice it has a name of item.null.name because we didn't set a name so it's null and it has no texture because we haven't set a texture for it um, if you're ever curious about how to give yourself an item it's just give for um, in this case forge dev name is what the player's name is set to and then you can actually start um, tab completing so if you want something from Minecraft in 1.7, it's actually done by name, not ID. So you can actually search for that. Um, and because everything is done via your mods, um, what's known as the mod domain. So let's mod reboot is our domain. That's our mod ID. You can actually get your items this way. So we have an item registered in the game. Uh, it doesn't do anything. It has no name. It has no texture. So why don't we fix that? Okay, guys. So I took a, uh, a few moments there, and I tried looking for a nice maple leaf sprite online. I couldn't find one, so I just made my own terrible one in uh, GIMP. Excellent free tool for uh, making graphics and whatnot. Uh, I, however, am just not an artist, so it probably looks more like a red flirtily or a sword with wings out of it, but that's my attempt at a maple leaf, and we'll deal with it. We have a texture, and you may have noticed I put it inside of my assets, let's mod reboot, textures, items, maple leaf. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we set the texture on it and set the name on it. So once again, I'm going to bring over the example from Coil Exchange for the generic class, because that's a good place to do something like this common. Um, here, we override how we get the name and the registering of icons and whatnot. So let's do this. And thank you for everyone who pointed out the Windows key shortcuts for this. Um, so here we have a finished example on the left, and here is us coding it on the right. So I just want to show you this side by side. Um, the getting of the name, so the, the un this method here, get unlocalized name, uh, is used partially inside of here where we register the icon. So this is doing the texture and this is setting the name. And the reason I do it in this way in the generic class here is because names show up in the following format. So names show up like this and I will do this in a comment block. So for example, item uh, maple leaf here, it shows up in this format. Um, you know what, actually, here's a better way to show it. Like this, okay. So let's copy this example and put it here. Okay, so we are like this. This is how Minecraft would look for the name for this item. It uses this syntax here, so it denotes it as an item dot the mod ID of the mod, colon, the name of the item, dot name. So here I have some methods that actually take that format and unwrap it into uh, a nicer way for me to handle it. Uh, so why don't we do something similar here? So let's see. Let's do the name first because the name is easier. Public. You know, I'm doing this in the wrong class. I should be doing this inside of item. Let's mod reboot. Um, once again, my disclaimer, this is not the only way to do it. This is how I like to do it. I find it very handy uh, because I don't have to worry about um, running a bunch of specialized code after the fact. So here, uh, I'm returning this string. And with it, I am returning it as a name and I'm replacing two pieces here. So this is a resource prefix, which is just the mod ID lower cased. And then I unwrap the name for this item, which is quite simply, uh, I strip off um, some text here. So I'm just gonna copy this method here. Because I am pro a prolific copier of my own code. You'll see here it's going to complain about this. Uh, so for here, I'm just going to say uh, reference mod ID to lowercase. 
And what that means is instead of this, it's going to be let's mod reboot. Uh, and there's two versions of this. There's a version for no parameter, and there's a version when given an item stack. As you can see here, it just doesn't care. Uh, so we will uh, copy this one as well, just because it's easier than typing it all the time. And the only thing you need to do then here is, and if we were to come back to this example, let's look at chalk again. So here in the generic, we have these methods now to handle getting the name for an object. Um, in the generic item, let's mod reboot. If we were to come to item maple leaf, all we need to do here is say set un localized name maple leaf. Let's load up Minecraft and look at the difference. Doing this now kind of will tie into uh, doing uh, localizations, which just having a brief look over in my course listing, uh, I don't really have that in there. So I think we're just going to touch on that as we as we move through the course. So you'll see here, if I did this correctly, yep, here we go. So here you can see that full name like I was telling you about here. So I'll highlight that bring this over and a mouse over. So you can see here, it formats it how Minecraft expects it. And that's what all this code is for. So in your item class, all you need to do is that, and you will get what Minecraft looks for. So uh, did I do that correctly? It doesn't look like it. What am I missing? Oh, I know what it is. Okay, if we were to look at this textures thing, it's not just that. I had a colon. So let's make sure we copy that. Um, let's rerun Minecraft and I'll show you it working properly. So yes, you can see here I have this textures class that is meant to uh, just give me some for more advanced stuff like modeling and whatnot um, references to where that is uh, really this is all we care about we use this a lot so let me just minimize that because we're done looking at EE3 code for the moment so you can see There we go. So now it's the proper item dot let's mod reboot colon maple leaf dot name. So what is that? Mm, let's see. Do I want to go into the localization or the texture? Let's do the texture. Okay. So I'll show you one more thing here. I'll just copy this from here into item let's mod reboot. And I'll explain it. What this method does is this is the method that actually says for this item. Um, this is the texture. I register the texture for it. And I want to show you this other annotation we're seeing for the first time here. This is another FML uh, annotation called side only. And what that does is it tells um, it, it tells uh, when you are compiling your code that this method only exists on the client side. And there is another side to this. There is uh, server side as well. Um, this is just a nice way to make sure that you've uh, forced client code into the client and not vice versa. So what this method does here is it takes in a path, a string, to where the texture can be found. And it actually uses um, that item domain thing. So now that we have this here, we're, we're actually overriding several methods from the item class. Actually, yeah. So if we were to look at, uh, let's see one, get on localized name. You can see how Minecraft does it. And we're doing it this special way, um, mostly because it, it works quite nicely.
I don't want to dive too much into the details. I've kind of explained it already as well as um, I know you guys just want to see how it works. You don't want to necessarily know all of the nitty gritty as to why it works. So loading this up now, now that we have this register icons uh, overridden method inside of our generic item, item let's not reboot, when we come into the game, we should notice a texture. And there we go. There is my ugly maple leaf. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all these slimes by turning it to peaceful. Bye-bye. Uh, another handy thing I love to do in my dev worlds is I set the game rule to daylight cycle false, and then I set the time to noon. So when I come into this world, it is always bright, and I never have to worry about turning to, uh, to dark. So there we go. We have an item. Uh, we have its name set, but not localized. So this is a properly set name, but it's not showing up as a what you would expect to read when you mouse over and see jungle wood. And we have a texture. So why don't I show you how to do your very first localization for items at the same time. So language files, localization files, are uh, considered an asset. So that's why we have this lang folder inside of our assets. And inside of here, I'm going to First, I'll show you here. Here's an example. En us lang. This is done by the locale. So we're going to add a file. En us lang. It's a text file. And this follows the format of a uh, Java properties file. So once again, if we were to look at the e 31 again, you can see here, it's just here is the, uh, the name of the item equals, and this is what should show up in game. So following that example, item dot let's mod reboot colon maple leaf dot name equals maple leaf of awesomeness. I had a moment where I couldn't spell. This is really like, this is what you need. That's all. So if we were to load up Minecraft again, single player, load up our world. There we go. We have our maple leaf of awesomeness. And that is our very first basic item. Now there's a lot of other things you can do with items and we'll touch on them throughout the series. Uh, we actually do have a course on advanced items and blocks and multi-blocks and stuff like that. Um, because if you look into the item class here, this is where Minecraft goes for all kinds of um, stuff related to items. Uh, items are the parent class for things like food and armor and weapons and stuff like that. So you'll find all kinds of things in here. Uh, you can set the maximum damage. You can set whether or not it's a repairable item, uh, how many of them can exist in a stack. Um, so, you know, is it 64 or is less than 64 is the hard limit? Just so you guys know all kinds of different things. You can recolor them, uh, you can make them like a bucket so that they're a container items, so that they hold something inside of it. Um, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, one of the things I do want to point out, touch on briefly here, is this is an item, uh, and then there's also something known as an item stack. And you maybe have heard of an item stack before. So what an item stack is, it is, uh, it is an object that uh, contains an item or a block, um, and it has a certain size of it. So an item defines um, the various properties about it, when a player holds it and they left, left click versus right click, what happens. An item stack is really more of an instance of that item. So in the game there, where I was holding my maple leaf of awesomeness, I was holding an item stack, and that item stack contained an item maple leaf. It was of that type. And I say that not 
meaning like a Java type. It's that is the type of item that the item stack was containing at that time. So that we will touch on a little bit more too, because item stacks are how you can uh, save specific data for an item. Uh, so for example, when you think of things like the Industrial Craft 2 um, Nano Saver or Jetpacks or whatnot, that's an item. You are holding an item stack, and that item stack has data on it. And that's actually something that took me a little bit to understand when I was first coding Minecraft, because I was thinking, I say data on the, a on the item. No, you say data on the item stack. So that's a hint. That's something looking forward. Uh, you don't need to worry about that for right now. Um, but I would like to just kind of reiterate everything we did in today's episode. So in today's episode, we went over how to create a, um, a recommended generic item class that extends item for your mod that allows you to kind of uh, at a high level encapsulate common things that you don't want to do over and over and over again when you're making your items. Because look at the difference here. We went from uh, one, we have one item right now. And it's very simple. We just, we declared it as it extends this. We called the super, we set the name, and we initialized it and registered it. We didn't have to do all of the stuff in this class and then add another item that did all the same stuff. You can just keep creating items this way and all you'd have to do is just set the name because by setting the name and following this format, so whatever you set the name, set the name of the, the texture to, and then make sure that you add its entry in the localization, you've added a valid item to the game. Uh, in episode 11, we're going to touch on those creative tabs, um, all those tabs you click on through the creative inventory and how you can actually set your item to it and add your own creative tabs. That'll be a relatively short episode. But for now, I also showed you how you can give it to yourself. So remember, the core of making an item, I recommend a generic class. Create your item. Create an instance of it. Register it inside of the pre-init uh, event stage. So hopefully that made a lot of sense to you guys. Um, next episode, we are going to be doing roughly the same thing uh, with blocks. Um, so just making our very first block in, uh, blocks in game. Um, and then after that, uh, looking at the course list, we're going to look at our first recipes and then creative tabs. So uh, hopefully you guys like this episode. Uh, we'll see you again in a few days. Uh, thank you again um, for all the support and, uh, and for letting me, it, it's really nice to hear that you guys are learning some things from this. Um, I realize this is pretty basic to start. Um, and hopefully we'll be getting into the more nitty gritty things like you guys are asking me for things like how do I make an item in 3D or um, you know how do I make multi blocks or how do I interact with other mods like NEI or Wayla or um, Thermal Expansion or something like that. So we'll touch on that. Um, just that'll be a little bit longer. Uh, like I like to do the base if you guys haven't noticed and then do the polish afterwards. So uh, long soliloquy over. Uh, that's it for episode 8. We'll see you in episode 9. Take it easy, guys. Thanks again.